Big news for everyone following the Starship program. SpaceX has just released some exciting new images of the upcoming Starship Block 3. And one part in particular is grabbing attention, something Elon calling gigantic waffles. So, what's new with Starship Block 3? And why are they so special? Let's take a closer look. That massive, spiky thing that looks like a giant tennis racket, it's actually the new version 3 grid fin for Starship. Right away, you can tell it's way bigger than the previous version. SpaceX even threw a guy in the shot for scale, just so we can see how massive these version 3 parts really are. They said the new grid fins are 50% larger and built with higher strength. When they mentioned higher strength, some expected these new grid fins to be made of titanium, like those used on the Falcon 9, but I don't think that's the case here. It's more likely they're still made from welded stainless steel, just thicker this time, which would naturally improve their strength. That would make sense since the previous design already performed well, and stainless steel is significantly cheaper overall. Just a little note, when you look at the picture, the actual grid fin is just the darker steel part in the middle. The shiny metal around it is actually just a tray it sits in. That plate is basically a jig used during manufacturing to hold everything in place. Now, one of the coolest parts of the new grid fin is right in the middle of the image, where it connects to the arm. There's a shiny, curved section, and according to SpaceX, that's a new catch point. This is what will let the ship be lifted and caught by the Mechazilla's arms. So, unlike the Block 2s that had separate catch pins below the grid fins and off to the sides, this new design has it all built in. Super slick, and I can't wait to see how it works in action. Now, you're probably dying to know how these new grid fins look on Super Heavy, right? Well, good news. Along with those awesome close-up pics, SpaceX also released some renderings of the full Starship Block 3, and yep, the new fins are on there. One of the first things you'll notice is that there are only three grid fins now instead of four like before. Why the change? It comes down to reducing complexity and weight. SpaceX is always trying to push the performance of the ship, and one big part of that is cutting unnecessary mass without sacrificing safety. Fewer fins mean a simpler system, and a lighter one too. After nine Starship test flights, SpaceX has a much better understanding of how much pitch control and maneuverability the booster actually needs. Turns out, they can still get the control they want with just three fins. Another interesting thing, the fins are asymmetrically placed. They're not spaced evenly around the booster. That's probably tied to a new maneuver SpaceX is trying. Remember, on a recent booster, they added those angled panels to the hot staging ring? The idea was that when Starship lit its engines and started pulling away, it would actually push the booster in a specific direction to help it start flipping. But now, the hot staging ring is no longer a separate structure. It's built directly into the booster, with an open, truss-like design, kind of similar to what some Russian rockets have done. So, to get that same pitch maneuver, SpaceX probably went with an asymmetrical fin layout. Most likely, that third fin, the one that's offset, gets pushed against by the airflow during staging, helping kick the booster into a predictable flip. And finally, the new grid fins have also been moved lower, further away from the engines during hot staging. If you remember from the last few booster launches, right after hot staging, the grid fins looked warped. That's because the insane heat from Starship's engines was actually deforming them. So shifting them down a bit is a smart fix. But while that's clever on its own, what's really caught the attention of a lot of experts is how the mechanical systems, like the actuators and linkages that make the fins move, will be set up inside the main tank. These systems sit in a special compartment inside the methane tank, but are separated from the actual fuel. So now the big question is, by lowering the position of the grid fins, does that introduce new mechanical challenges? Like, does it make the system more complex to route or maintain? There's a ton of hype around Starship Block 3 right now, and honestly, it makes total sense. It's the latest version of what might be the most ambitious rocket ever built. And with this update, pretty much everything is getting an upgrade. The Super Heavy booster in Block 3 stands a towering 72.3 meters tall. It holds a massive 3,650 tons of propellant and delivers a mind-blowing 8,240 metric tons of thrust at liftoff. If you look at the render again, you'll notice how clean and minimal the base of the booster looks. That's thanks to SpaceX's new engine, the Raptor 3. Unlike earlier versions, Raptor 3 doesn't need a traditional external heat shield. In the current design, you can see the nozzles, but everything else, like the thrust chambers and turbo pumps, is tucked away inside individual firewalled compartments. But with Raptor 3, that's all changed. The new design has integrated cooling circuits built directly into the engine components themselves. No separate shielding needed. From the outside, it looks super sleek and simple. But inside? 
it's a whole different story. The engine is packed with complex internal cooling paths that run through the thrust chamber, turbo pump, and basically every part. This setup boosts both structural and thermal efficiency. That said, it comes with a trade-off. During descent, the engines are fully exposed to the heat and plasma of re-entry, so any fragile or unnecessary external parts that could burn off mid-flight have to be removed. Inside the Starship Block 3 booster, there's a brand new redesigned fuel transfer tube, and it's massive. To give you an idea of the scale, it's roughly the same size as the entire first stage of a Falcon 9. This new transfer tube is built to move cryogenic fuel from Super Heavy's main tank down to all 33 Raptor engines. One of the biggest improvements with this design is that it now allows all 33 engines to start up at the same time. In earlier versions, engine startups had to be staggered or less synchronized because of fuel delivery limits. Being able to ignite all engines simultaneously is a huge deal. It helps reduce the risk of uneven thrust or ignition issues, which could cause the booster to wobble or go off course during crucial moments like liftoff or landing. SpaceX also mentioned that this new setup will enable faster and more reliable flip maneuvers, which ties back to what we talked about earlier with the grid fin placement and flight control upgrades. Moving on to the Starship upper stage, Block 3 now measures 52.1 meters in length and holds 1,550 tons of propellant. One of the major upgrades SpaceX is aiming for with this version is a more advanced, fully reusable heat shield. Elon Musk has emphasized how challenging this is. Achieving a heat shield that can survive multiple re-entries is something even the space shuttle never fully managed. However, he also stressed that it's not impossible. It's difficult, but achievable within the laws of physics. Like the upgraded Super Heavy Booster, the upper stage will also be powered by Raptor 3 engines. This change addresses several critical issues seen in earlier versions. Most notably, Starship Block 2 experienced serious propellant leaks which contributed to the failure of multiple test flights. Raptor 3 was designed to eliminate the need for traditional external heat shielding around the engine section. This reduces mass at the base of the vehicle and improves overall reliability. For instance, in the event of a small fuel leak, the exposed components allow the leaked propellant to simply burn off in the surrounding plasma during flight. In contrast, Earlier engine designs enclosed in shielded compartments posed a much higher risk if a leak occurred due to trapped fuel and heat buildup. Another major feature coming with Starship Block 3 is the ability to perform in-orbit propellant transfer. This is a critical capability for long-duration missions beyond Earth orbit, and SpaceX aims to demonstrate it as early as next year. Despite recent setbacks, SpaceX is still targeting the first flight of Starship Block 3 by the end of this year. If you're as excited about it as I am, drop a Let's Go V3 in the comments below. Now, if you're a private space venture, I have great news. On Wednesday, former President Donald Trump issued a new executive order aimed at loosening regulations on the commercial space industry, a move that could benefit companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, and more. The order instructs federal agencies to accelerate launch and re-entry approvals aiming to cut down bureaucratic delays that have long frustrated the industry. Specifically, it directs the U.S. Secretary of Transportation to eliminate or speed up environmental reviews tied to launch licenses handled by the FAA. It also calls for scrapping outdated, redundant, or overly restrictive rules governing launch and re-entry vehicles. One key focus is Part 450, a regulation originally introduced during Trump's first term to streamline the commercial launch process. While intended to simplify things, many in the industry now say Part 450 has become overly complex and difficult to navigate. The new order pushes for a reevaluation, amendment, or even full rescission of that rule. Another notable change? The head of the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation could become a political appointee, giving the White House more influence over how licensing priorities are set and enforced. Politics aside, if implemented, this order could directly impact SpaceX, one of the most active launch providers on Earth, as it gears up for more Starship test flights. But it doesn't stop there. The directive could also support other major players as they prepare to scale up operations in the evolving commercial space race. And for space fans like us, it could mean more rockets, more launches, and a lot more excitement in the near future. Woohoo! Of course, with any major policy shift, Criticism is inevitable, 
These changes are likely to face pushback from environmental groups, especially over concerns about protecting launch ranges and nearby habitats in coastal states like Florida, California, and Texas. The executive order also introduces a number of structural changes to support its deregulatory goals. It creates a new advisory role at the Department of Transportation focused on innovation and deregulation and calls for establishing an associate administrator for commercial space transportation at the FAA to lead regulatory reform efforts. In addition, it directs agencies to assess whether state-level regulations, particularly under the Coastal Zone Management Act, are slowing down spaceport development. The goal is to streamline procedures, reduce regulatory overlap, and accelerate construction timelines. Finally, the order mandates the creation of a streamlined process for authorizing novel space activities, referring to missions that fall outside the scope of existing regulatory frameworks. The future of spaceflight is shaping up to be incredibly exciting, not just for Starship, but across the entire industry. There's so much to look forward to the next Starship launch, version 3 developments, and eventually the journey to Mars. So stay with us to keep up with all the latest updates. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.